Hey folks, welcome back. Something caught my eye over at Law and Crime channel. That is that uh, Andrew Tate is uh, forced to hand over some of his uh, electronic uh, devices, which um, shocked me a bit because I have assumed for months that this was already done. And that, among other things, was what uh, most of the case against him rested on. I just want to say Let's walk over to Law and Crime Sidebar with uh, Jesse Weber and Anginit Levi. Levi, yeah. Okay, that the judges today made the right decision. I respect um, bad sound. And My they apologies. Will be vindicated in their decision because I'm an innocent man and I can't wait to prove it. Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan made a trip to the prosecutor's office in Romania this week, turning over more of their electronic devices to investigators. It's part of that ongoing human trafficking investigation into the Tate brothers. They were released from jail late last month after spending months there. Well, first of all, He, uh, he wasn't released, he, uh, sort of. He was released from jail, but into house arrest. That's a bit of a difference there. But after his release, he went back with uh, electronic devices. And I, as I said, I was a bit stunned that he had more electronic devices. Maybe this is a part of a deal or something. I don't know. Uh, let's continue listening to these people. To discuss the seizure of some of the Tate brothers' electronics, or I should say additional electronics, is John Lusich. He is a digital forensic expert. John, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. John, I'm wondering, uh, what do you think uh, goes into, well, tell us what goes into this type of thing? Electronics, we see this evidence presented in court. It can be quite tedious. It can be voluminous. The, the reports and the evidence gathered from electronic devices through the different types of software. So uh, they've already seized some electronics. Now they've turned over additional. Yeah, exactly. As uh... Jesse says um, they all he already have turned over some electronic devices, but now all of a sudden additional. Nice uh, haircut there, uh, Mr. Tate. Let's continue. Electronics that were requested by the prosecutors. What goes into searching through these devices? Well, it all depends on the type of device. I'm sure they turned in USB drives and other external drives, as well as computers and cell phones and tablets, and the, the list goes on. iPads and um, media, any type of media that will hold media, including MP3 players. So what they're going to do is they're going to forensically... MP3 players? Do those exist still? Uh. ...image each one of these devices and then bring it into a software program that can actually um, do high speed searches. You know, and when I say high speed, on a two terabyte hard drive, it may take 24 hours to process it and search it, but literally it would take you months and months to go through it if you had to you know, sit there and you're never gonna see anything. Because the nice thing about forensic software, we're gonna be able to see what was in the allocated portions and the unallocated, which ca carries cached information and deleted information in the unallocated areas of the hard drive. I've been involved with this since 1988, Technology has evolved. It's getting much better. Um, back in involved since 1988. Okay, that explains the MP3 comment. But what he says uh, is nothing new to me, at least. That uh, with a forensic uh, program, they can go into and find things that is deleted. Uh, let's continue. In the 90s, I was quoted as saying. Um, that you can tell more about a person on their computer, but looking 
at their computer than you can can, um, can tell from a police background check. I don't care. Oops. Yeah, that is very true. Because uh, from a police uh, background check, there's limits to what you can find out. But if you have an iPad, iPhone, any smartphone, everything is in it. In the catch memory, in the normal memory, search if, if you uh, have a cloud memory, everything will be there. Let's continue. FBI background check. And the reason being is because unless you've had some kind of contact with the FBI or law enforcement at all, they have nothing on you. Okay. However, I look at your computer and I'm going to be able to say what your likes and dislikes are, where you want to go for um, vacation. I can learn so much about you Let's by what you're searching for, up. because you may think that you clear browsing history. It's there forever until we seize your computer, unless you take the overt step of overriding that with shredding utilities. So there. Well. That's unless you have the uh, program built in to your computer, which is not legal advice. I do not give legal advice, but it could be good to have one of those that automatically, when you delete something, it overwrites. Let's continue. There's going to be a lot of information and all of us, all of us live by our technology devices today. There isn't anything that we don't do that doesn't involve technology right down to the gas pumps. Is it amazing? I go fill up and before I even pull away, I'm getting a notice from my credit card company that I just charged $32 for a gallon of gas. Yeah. It's amazing. Or, and, and maybe you got some ads for something you were just talking about. That always kills me when I'm literally just sitting around talking about something and then suddenly I'm seeing an ad on social media for the product. What's up with that? Absolutely. So in the United States, that's illegal to do, but they're doing it anyway. I guess Congress is protecting them somehow because you can literally start talking and all of a sudden talking about CB radios and then all of a sudden start getting ads for CB radios. That should not be allowed, but because no one's enforcing that and no one's holding people accountable, people do it. And there's no doubt about it. When you take this cell phone with you, anything you say is being saved somewhere. Also, uh, modified truth. Uh, if you go into your phone and uh, take away, uh, for instance, Facebook and everything, their possibility to access your uh, camera, your sound, your pictures and stuff, then uh, it, well, unless, well, if you have those enabled, yeah, they might. Uh, record you. So, again, be careful with your phone, but don't leave it uh, off for too long, especially not in, what is it, Michigan, Illinois, or something like that. They can interpret that, that you are either dead or guilty of murder. Let's continue. Yeah, you it's you gotta be careful with that. If you're gonna have a secret meeting for some reason, you don't bring your cell phone. Yeah, it's as creepy as can be. Uh, I always say, and going back to what you said, you've said, um, I always say, you know, you really get to know the real person by going through their text messages. So, this is a case involving uh, allegations of human trafficking. So, I'm assuming, um, there will be text messages that show communications between Andrew Tate, his brother, and these accusers. Uh, there will likely be encrypted messages. A lot of people use WhatsApp, Signal, things like that. Uh, so how, what's the process for going through all of that? And then let's say you're Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate and you were using, you know, I'm speaking hypothetically here because I don't know that if they were, uh, an encrypted app such as WhatsApp or Signal. How are you going to get into that to, to look through that stuff? Well, as long as I have the access code, it's no problem because when we forensically image that, we're getting the decrypted stuff. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind we can see what's happening because we work a lot of cases. We have 54 cases going right now of all different types, including cell site analysis with cell phones to find out somebody's location during homicides or, or whatever. And um, we can see all the WhatsApp uh, messages. We don't have a problem seeing them. You know? Yeah, uh, this is why I think that uh, Mr. Tate might have struck a deal with uh, the prosecution in Romania that uh, if uh, 
he turns over everything, even phones and stuff they haven't found. They can release him to house arrest instead. It's a bit of speculation from my side there, but uh, you never know. Let's continue. It's the stuff that sometimes gets deleted, gets, gets overwritten, because people have to realize this. <laughs> we use our cell phones much more than we use our computers. So we're getting a lot more back from our computers because that has the bigger hard drive space or storage space, and we use it a lot less. We don't carry it around with us. It's not always on, but our cell phones are always on unless we're rebooting it for a software update or something like that. And um, they, they have a much smaller device. So if something gets deleted about a month ago, it's very possible that you're not going to get that back. Because I always tell people, things live on cell phones in um, weeks and months, not months and years. So it's very possible that what they're searching for may not be there. But the defense has to get copies. And I'm sure that because if they're good lawyers, before they even turn them in, they should have forensically imaged them themselves mm. to be able to say that this is what it was when we gave you. So if it changes, so there's some explaining to do, right? So because we do that a lot with defense work. We were asked to image this before they turn this into whatever agency they have to turn it into. So we have a date and uh, a, a, a copy of the evidence as though it sat before they turned it in. Not that they're accusing anybody of doing anything surreptitiously or wrong, but they just want to protect their clients. And I yeah, that's a uh, good lawyer work if they have done that. Uh... Might be a hint towards uh, other lawyers that I've seen on uh, streams from uh, law and crime uh, that uh, things they should have thought of before they went to trial. Let's continue. Totally understand. John, one of the things I find interesting is the fact that the attorney for the Tate brothers says that the prosecutors had already seized electronics. Now the brothers are being summoned to the prosecutor's office to turn over additional electronics. So why why now? Because they were arrested back in late December. They, they were just released from jail about two weeks ago um, where they were being held pending, you know, further progress in this case as it moves forward. So to me, why wouldn't you have just seized everything early on? Now they're turning over additional electronics. And that goes to your point about what was what was possibly overwritten yes yeah, so it's possible that they didn't know those devices existed it's possible that they're new devices and if they are new devices they shouldn't be turned over and their attorney should fight that in law because in a court of law because if you're looking at past crimes and these are new devices because the only thing you're going to be getting on that new device is really attorney client privilege information and i can tell you this firsthand that they say they don't look but sometimes they do look you know, um, and they can't use that, but it gives them information. So especially outside this country, um, I don't always trust that side. Um, so you always have to make sure of what they're doing and copy everything. But there shouldn't be a reason to seize new devices. So it really has to be old devices, because if these were new devices, their attorneys should have objected because there would be nothing in there from the time they are allegedly committed that crime that they're being accused of. And from what we understand, the Tate brothers, this case is still in what's called the investigative phase, despite sure. the fact that they had been detained. Um, so they're going and looking for additional evidence on electronics. Are they just dotting their I's and crossing all of their T's, these prosecutors? Or are they really fishing? I mean, I guess the alternatives, they're fishing for additional evidence because maybe they don't have enough evidence to back up their case. I feel like there are two alternatives here, or maybe even three. So you never know what's in the mind of a prosecutor, right? But it's very possible that they're fishing. When they want as many devices as they can, they're fishing. They're looking for stuff, especially if they're new devices, because there shouldn't be anything on a new device that has to do with past crimes. Unless what they're saying is that he got a new device, but he did an Apple backup or a, a Droid backup and restored stuff that we didn't have on the prior phone, but it was in the backup. So there's a, I, there's a lot of possibilities of why they're doing that. But So we don't even know if they're new device or old devices. But the only but how would they know if they did a Droid backup you know, or uh, restore the Droid backup or an Apple backup? How would they know that? So they just got to be careful what they do online because they may have a warrant, a, da a communications data warrant to actually be watching them in real time. And this is where they may be getting some additional information. And some countries don't even need a communication data warrant. I don't know what these other countries' laws are, what they're prohibited to do and what they're allowed to do. But um, when you're talking about different laws like that, anything's possible. Yeah, that, that was uh, an interesting uh, take there. Um... When it comes to Romanian uh, legislation, I'm not sure exactly how they are uh, with. Uh, uh, I do know we have they have attorney-client privilege, but as they say, they might have 
get, get on these new devices, then started to download uh, uh, from a cloud or something of that, uh, something like that. And their home is probably uh, bugged. Uh, I would assume so. Romania is a foreign Eastern European state. And uh, they have a long and interesting history in uh, bugging, <laughs> bugging houses and uh, people. So it might just be that the Tate brothers got home, got new devices and started uh, calling around. Maybe warning people, maybe uh, talking to uh, people abroad making plans you never know and that might be one of the reasons uh, their prosecution is uh, fishing for information because if this turns uh, international then you have europol uh, the european union's uh, equivalent to fbi probably uh, that it can be an international uh, uh, an international case but also, I have to agree with uh, Miss uh, Weber or Levy, I don't know which one it is, uh, that if the prosecution is still fishing after evidence, then the case might be weaker than I thought it was. And uh, that's a scary thought. But... Again, you never know. Let's listen to the final seconds here. Anything certainly is possible. Well, John Lusich, digital forensic expert, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Love to talk to you again. Have a great day. And that's okay. That was it from Law and Crime. And uh, I don't have much to add, but I have this sneaking suspicion that uh, these new devices is, as they called it. Uh, Fishing, and um, that could mean that the prosecution's case is a bit weaker than uh, anticipated. But it will be interesting to follow this case, as I've been doing now for a few months. But uh, yeah, I got the information. Now you have the information and my thoughts about it, and. Uh, yeah, until next time, you all have a nice day and I'll talk to you later.